I brought uh, two project files, but a bit stripped down because I want to go a little bit more in depth. And also because I work at a, a studio computer at home, so the projects get really big and my computer actually, of my laptop, cannot handle the big projects. So I stripped it down a bit. Um, first, I'm going to do my release Trabanka. Um, and for the people that don't know it yet, I will play it first so we know what we're talking about. I get a lot of questions about uh, my kick drums specifically. So first I want to explain you how I do it and how I make my kick drums. Um, so I often use a really short uh, kick sample or multiple and then layer a synth uh, below that for either the real sub or the mid sub. So here is the project and over here are the kick layers that are active. So this one consists of uh, four layers. Um, as you can see, there's a few disabled samples as well, because like making a good kick is always a process. So you try things, it doesn't work, but I still leave it in there and search for something better. Um, so let's check these samples. Um, the first one is this sample. And actually nothing really special is on there, only a little EQ. And this, is, this EQ, this dip here, about 100 hertz, is uh, to make room for the next sample, which is uh, this one. And the first one is really boomy and has a lot of punch that you feel in your chest in the club. The second one is the clicky, and actually this is uh, the kick I used in my track Invictus, which is all, also like three layers or something, but I really like the click. So I use this sample. As you can see, it's made quite short because normally it's much, much longer, but I just need the, the click part. Um, to get more click in your kick, I often EQ it. And this is the EQ on there. Um, as you can see here, this 80 hertz, it's about the same where the other dipped. So if you combine them, it works better together. And a good trick is this transient designer from Waves. Um, as you can see here, you've got four bands. And the second of the third and the fourth band are boosted by 3 and 3.4 decibels. And what it does is every time the kick hits, it boosts the high frequencies really shortly. So let me compare it for you guys. If you disable it, and now enabled. Not sure if you can hear the difference here, but gets a lot more click. I use it a lot on my kicks. Uh, just be sure that when you open it, you're not uh, messing with the low end range because then you're boosting the low end as well and you want to control that. So then onto the next layer um, is the bass line. Actually, it's just the root note completely filled out. And it's a silent one, saw wave, actually just an init preset from silent. Um, but then on top of that, like if I disable the effects, this is just a saw. Um, so the first EQ. As you can see, I'm boosting uh, every harmonic. 
to create the EDM kind of kick. And then second EQ. It's even more. And I'm boosting a lot, like eight decibels in the low end. And uh, I know it sounds crazy, but I just want to tell you guys, don't be afraid to use EQs and just try, try stuff. Um, then it's a Saturn. And actually this one, as you can see, I made a band in the low end and boosted it even more on the warm tube mode to create a little bit of distortion. And then this is funny because, um, as I told you, building a kick is really a process. So I was aiming for this to be the, the big room kick, so it has all the harmonics. But then in the end, uh, I wasn't happy with it, and I found another sample to use the harmonics. So what I did to the sub was add one final EQ, and actually I cut everything I made away to make just the sine. And it's super stupid because I just could have used the sine wave, but it's a process, so you start on trying things, get the best result, and that's it. Um, so all these together. We have this, and of course, by the way, there's a, I need to enable this LF photo over here uh, to make room for the punch. And then we have one final layer, and that's the sample I talked about um, in EDM Quick Kick from Vengeance. And in the end, I decided to use this for the harmonic layer to make it EDM feel. And of course, the low end is completely cut out from it because you already have your own low end. And then there's an LFO tool as well to compensate for the, for the punch from the other kicks. And that's basically the kick. And it's, it's, different, it's a different process every time, but I think this is a yeah, cool to try out yourself at home. Um, then um, I'm using this sub pack at home. I've showed it multiple times, but I'm not sure if you guys know this. This is a big vibration unit. You connect it to your sound card and put it in the back of your chair, and it vibrates uh, at the bass notes. There's everything, I think, between like 20 to 150 hertz. It vibrates, and you can feel it. And the cool thing is that it really connects uh, to your music, so if you don't put it too loud, but just a little bit, you get the feel that you're in a club. And for me, it makes it much easier to really mix your kick well, because you're not in a club in the studio. Uh, I'm still working in a small room, so my speakers don't even produce that much sub. And with this tool, you can feel the side chain as exactly like how you should put it. So I think it's worth to check it out. I use it on every single track. Um, okay, another uh, small trick for your kick. Um, sometimes I feel that a kick is lacking punch. And to solve that, I sometimes use this tool. It's from Isotope, and it's Isotope RX6. It's an audio editor. Um, so let me show you. If you grab a kick sample, I'll put it in here. This is just a cashmere kick. Sounds like this, but if, for example, if you want to change the punch, you've got a really cool feature, uh, which is called pitch contour. And if you open it, you get a, um, this is the time you have over here, that you selected over here. So this is actually the kick. And let me remove these. You can place bands over here, and as you can see, it says how much semitones you pitch it up based on time. So, for example, if you pitch it up like four or five, and then down immediately, what happens is that the click stays the same because that's at zero, and then you pitch it up really quickly to create, for example, a higher pitched uh, punch, and it goes down immediately to the root node of the kick. And then you can press compare. Uh, You hear the difference? And then if you process it, you can bounce it out and you have uh, edited your kick to get more or less punch, whatever you want. Um, next on, uh, there's a few elements in this drop that I want to show you. Um, of course, you've got the leads, you've got the kick, but then there's a lot of background noises or background synths that uh, really make the track sound full and complete. 
And often people like ask, how do you get it sound so full? Well, I think it's because of these background synths, so I want to show you. I first play it uh, a little part with these, and then I'll turn them off. And hopefully you hear the difference. Now it's still cool, but it sounds really empty, I think. And actually the, the main thing that's doing that is this weird synth. You, like, you don't even hear it in the track, but when it's missing, it really lacks like, the, the completeness. Um, so what this is, is uh, silent one, two saw waves, detuned, uh, nothing really special, and then This is the bass sound, and I put a lot of EQs and distortion after each other to make it a bit more special. And because I used the detune with two saws and a retrigger off, it's it's really wide sound, so it fills up the like it makes your track sound really wide as well. Um, I think the rest is not really. Uh, what is this? just distortion stuff, but it's basically about the sounds. And I'm not sure if you hear it on the speakers because they have a really loud sip over here. But if you listen in your studio, you really hear that it's an empty track or it's full, but you don't really know what's, what's the difference. Um, so I would advise to check out uh, small background sounds. Of course, noise as well, but also try to play with these uh, synth stuffs. One more time. Um, and next thing um, with mixing, it, which is really important, is stereo width. And if I check some demos that I get from you guys, from uh, not you guys, but from a lot of guys, uh, I often hear like problems with the stereo image. Um, either it's really mono, or it's just completely like spread out way too much and therefore it gets like a lot of high-end troubles and stuff. So um, back in my days I also had uh, like issues with getting the stereo right and I put some acoustic treatments in my room, especially left, right and above you. And then um, the stereo image just gets so much better. So I would advise to check that out. Also don't uh, mix the stereo on your headphones because it just doesn't really work. You don't get the full image. You need to do it on speakers to really listen to where the sound is placed. And then um, to mix it, always try to uh, use different stereo techniques, but I will show it later on in a different project as well. Also for percussion, uh, try to uh, put percussion like one thing left, one thing right. Um, so it spreads out, and if you put some sounds on all these sides of the stereo image, your track will sound way better, I think. Um, any questions so far on this project? No? Okay, then let me open. The next one. Shit, I can't play the track now because it's loading. Okay, I'll start already. Um, so this is my remix for Alive by Sick Individuals. We just gave a masterclass as well. And first I want to show you the break and how to um, make your break sounds like cool and also use the, the right amount of layers and stuff. Um, first I'll play the track. If it loads, yeah. Ain't got nothing left But your silhouette And fire dancing in your eyes Only you and I And the satellites Till it's gone with the sunrise
So um, the project is stripped down as well. So there were a lot of more sounds, but it just brought these parts. Um, first, the break. Uh, So I want to talk about the oh. <laughs> about the, the layers I use. Um, often when I, sometimes I hear like tracks uh, that have a lot of super saw layers on top of each other, but the problem is like all these super saw sounds kind of the same, have a lot of high end and noisy, and then it gets really thin and lacks energy, I think. So I want to show you how I uh, usually do this do this kind of stuff. So let's start with uh, the super saws one by one. Check. This is the first synth. Um, it's Avenger, and I'm not sure if you guys know this synth. It's not really popular that, that much, but it's uh, my favorite synth right now. Um, it's made by Vengeance. And you can see it like uh, it has the sounds a bit like Nexus, but you can edit everything you want and actually way more than you want. It's crazy. It's much more versatile than silent or whatever. Uh, only thing it's pretty heavy on your CPU, so you need to have a good computer. But this is the actually the only real uh, super saw uh, I used. Uh, and as you can see, even the EQ is disabled, so it's just literally the sound out of the synth. And then the second layer over here is much more in your face. It's not this super saw noisy stuff. It's a bit the uh, distorted sound. And a uh, basic EQ thing I almost always do is dip a bit in the 200 to 4, 500 hertz area because that's uh, often a bit muddy. And if you cut it out, um, yeah, it sounds way better, and I think uh, yeah, I learned it uh, back in the days, and now I'm using it almost on all sounds. Of course, listen how your track sounds, but still, it's good to try it at least, uh, because it's often an area with some problems. Also, I'm cutting out uh, the low end a bit, because I'm adding a, l a new layer later for that to control it better. So these two together, It's already quite full. Um, it goes to a bus with a little bit of... Oh, fuck, it's loading here. Oh, my God. I can't grab it. <laughs> well, the EQ is not that special. <laughs> um, the reverb, uh, I use Arts Acoustic Reverb a lot for the long reverbs. Um, it sounds really clean, and I use the same kind of preset on almost all the sounds. And what happens then is that they all glue together really well. Because if you use different reverbs, you get a different room, and then it sounds a bit weird. So if you add the same reverb to all these sounds, they glue together and it sound, sounds as one. Um, so then what's, what they are playing, is uh, some chords, or actually just a root note and a fifth. And then I always put my melody on top of the super saws as well, uh, because the melody needs to be in front. And they both play uh, the same stuff, actually. Then we have a bass line. This is um, the mid bass. As you can see, I cut out a bit of the low end as well. And this is really to fit in between like the sub bass and the super sauce. And then of course you need a real sub bass for the club feel. Um, and it's just a sine wave from silent. That's it, plays the same notes. Thank you. 
And then there's one more layer, which is delete. Uh, and that's Let me check. Is it in here? Ah, uh, yeah. Also Avenger. Um, so this is the bass sound coming out of the synth. Actually, this EQ isn't even needed, but um, I always do it on every single sound. Put the EQ first, cut out the low end, uh, actually to see if there's like problems. And then I use this plugin, Novatech Character, and it's pretty cool. It's a exciter distortion kind of thing. Uh, really easy to use and just brings more presence to your sound. And then, of course, the same reverb as I told you, so it glues together well. And the LFO tool is disabled for now. It's uh, in the second break when the kicks comes in. So all together. Um, let me show you in the spectrum, because now you have like all these layers, and I think it's good to try it at your home. I like, have a sub layer, have a mid bass layer, mid bass over here, then the chord starts, and and, this, and uh, the lead in between. And I think I actually uh, I cannot show you because the EQ is not opening. But in the super saw chords, I made a dip at the root note frequency of the lead, so the lead cuts through better. Uh, in the super solid, but I cannot show it because it's I can't grab this thing. <laughs> uh, and then of course you add some um, percussion, uh, like simple cashmere claps are here. This, some crowd claps. And usually, I think I would use like maybe two or two super saws, so one, maybe maybe one more. Um, but for this track, because there's a vocal on top, you also need to have space for the vocal, so that's why it's fairly simple now. Um, I think that's it, so let's go to the drop over here. You know the drop. <laughs> um, so with this one, I want to give you an example as well. With um, like, if I disable the lead sounds, and then I need to see this one as well. Um, the track still sounds really wide and has a lot of ambience, and that's what I was talking about with the background stuff that really fills up your track. Like there's still a lot of uh, background stuff happening. And for example, if I play it without all this that stuff, uh, it sounds pretty shitty. Shit. <laughs> Why is it doing one second? Well, you get the idea. So um, over here as well, there's all these noise layers that are pretty wide. Uh, for example, this crowd sample is it's a really wide sound. Um, so it's good for the stereo image. And all these noises are on top that really give the power to the track. Um, so let's go to the leads. So actually, it's a uh, four lay oh, three layers. Um, I'll play them one by one. So this is the main one. 
It's a Nexus lead. Um, this is the EQ. Um, Actually, this is not my normal thing I do. Usually, I dip it around here, but for this track, I felt like it needed a little boost. Um, I use Noble the character again. Fab filter setter, and most of, most of you guys know it, I think. Um, stereo imager, and as I told you, try to use different stereo techniques. So on this one, I use the S1 imager stereo, which just uh, boosts the side sig signals. But on the second one, I'll show you a different one. And then together, you have the maximum kind of stereo image. It glues better together. Um, that's some more this uh, bit crusher, just a tiny bit. And then, as I told you, always put an EQ afterwards. Because as you can see, if I play it, um, all these distortion plugins, they add rumble in the low end. As you can see here, this was there. And I cut it out because it creates trouble on your track. So that's the first lead. The second one has the same kind of vibe, but it's placed super, super wide. And that's because I used the uh, Fruity's Stereo Shaper. Um, it just delays the left or right signal with a few milliseconds. Um, and now I think the left channel is delayed by, let's check, 19 milliseconds. Uh, I'm not sure if you hear it on these speakers. But actually, in the studio, you can hear it's like placed over there, and the other lead is a bit more in the middle, and then together, uh, it fills it up. And it actually sounds like one, one lead sound. Then we have a third one, which is uh, dead center, uh, because we already have a bit of the white stuff. And it's a bit cleaner saw uh, thing. It's basically a saw wave with the shaper function in Avenger. And as you see, I disabled the stereo plugin because I was trying to mess with it, but then I thought, like, okay, we need one center lead. So we have one, two different stereo techniques and one just playing in the middle and then together. Um, so that's the leads. Uh, a cool trick, I'm not sure if any of you guys use FL Studio. Yeah? Okay, so I'm not sure. Uh, when I talk to this about people, n hardly anyone knows it. Uh, as you can see, I'm using pitch bend for these three leads, but it's only one uh, pitch bend automation. So how it works is you create the first one just by right-clicking, uh, make an automation clip. And then for the next one, you right-click, go to Link to Controller, and Internal Controller, you select. If you click, you see all the automation clips in your project. Like it starts empty, and you, you select the right one. So right now it was lead one channel pitch because you just made that. You, like this button is red the first time you use this feature, so disable it and then click accept. And now both of them follow the exact same pitch band uh, automation. And you can use it for all automation. You use it for filters as well. Um, it's much easier and a cleaner project file because you can have multiple things linked together. Um, let me check. And of course, there is also a bus for the leads. Uh, usually, I don't really put that much on it, but over here, I see I did. Um, yeah, so why am I dipping here? Uh, I think like the 1.5K hertz is always a bit harsh on your ears. And if you dip it a little bit, the sound, sound gets a bit cleaner. So that's why I'm often like dipping a little bit at 1.5K. 
and sometimes boosting at 5K to get a bit more presence. Of course, it's difficult, different for uh, every single uh, sound you have, but uh, these are some guidelines that I use uh, to EQ. Um, there's two Saturns. I actually don't really use that anymore on the buses. And uh, of course, sidechain. I, I sidechain with the uh, LFO tool, and I use uh, just one LFO tool for all the leads together, so they have exactly the same uh, sidechain. Um, okay, let's see. I want to show the rest. Jesus, <laughs> sorry guys. <laughs> not sure why it's not working anymore. Um, let's see what's interesting. Mm. Well, I didn't use it in, in, in this project, but uh, for percussion sometimes I use uh, LFO tool as well. And I can quickly show you. Uh, over here. I made a, oh, the preset's not here. Well, okay. I set it up like this, disable the volume, and turn on the panning. And then you can set the rate over here, or just use freeform. And I put this, for example, on hi hat sometimes, or on noise. And what happens is it really it pans really fast, so your sound goes from left to right, left right, non-stop. And that way you can create a nice stereo image as well. Like if you layer two hi-hats on top of each other, play the same rhythm. With one you use this technique, and with one just in the center or a different technique. And like all small tricks to make it sound uh, wider. And actually, you see the, yeah, this is the one uh, I always use. There's no sound coming through now, but like this. Um, and then... I think that's basically it. Do you guys have any questions? Yeah? Okay, wait, let me throw this to you. Uh, what's the name of the thing you showed us? Uh, it's called SUBPAC. S-U-B-P-A-C. Um, uh, I, I, uh, who can I tell it? Uh, you, you're, uh, okay, no, it's the track from uh, Kivu, actually, but uh, I don't really know how to uh, make such uh, cool vocal shops in the drop, like, um, yeah, like such vocal leads. Vocal leads? Yes, like, it looks like, so, yeah. Um, well, actually, um, I think it's from Nexus. Yeah. They have some vocal chops, and sometimes you can just use samples as well. Yeah. Um, there are, like these days, there are a lot of packs that have uh, vocal chops in, in it. And of course, you need to like, yeah, find the right one and layer it. But in Trabanca, yeah. I think it's Nexus, but it's four <laughs> layers on top okay. of each other. Mm. Thank you. So check it out, maybe. They have some uh, preset packs to check out. Any more questions? Yeah. In the build-up, did yeah. you use uh, Gator for the vocals to chop them up, or was it Glitch 2? Um, Pre-vocal drop, I think. In a, the Alive remix? Yeah. Okay, wait, let me, let me check. <laughs> because I removed the build-up, yeah. so it's able to run. Yeah, it's glitched too. Yeah. Yeah. You know it? Yes, of course, okay, man. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some more questions. If you can throw it. Um, how did you make the bass in Mantra? Because um, 
I think you also have like the EDM-ish kind of big room kick, yeah. the long tail, and uh, also the the bass hits uh, inside of the tail. Yeah. How, how do you how do you manage that? Um, I have to think. I th I I think I put uh, just a kick with a sub below it, and then the fast side kind of notes on top so of that without the real low end because I tried to do it with the real low end and then it, it started to like it, it was too fast or like it didn't sound really good so I decided to use one long uh, just a sine wave I think okay thank yeah? you cool uh, some more questions behind you yeah uh, hi um, so I had a question about the sub bass and your kick um, the balancing because I have um, sometimes issues with the dynamics um, because yeah. if I mix my sub bass um, too loud then my leads are not that present uh -huh. and I want to know if you have like a key rule um, how to balance your main um, body kick with a sub bass um, I would say like always compare your track um, with something that's a little bit similar like that's the way I used it, and that's also the way I used to balance uh, the sub. Because if you have a track uh, that's kind of similar, and you put it on top, then you can put your kick the same volume, the sub the same volume, and also the leads the same volume, and then it should work out. Okay, thank you. And uh, also, yeah. Yeah, because sometimes uh, yeah. like I get my sub really big and boomy, uh -huh. and and when I compare like um, tracks with uh, by Kura or something, uh, uh -huh. some artists, artists, they have like um, the sub is pretty quiet though on my speakers, yeah. and it's uh, more like the mid range basses which are um, pumpy, and yeah, that's that's why I wanted to know how you balance your kick with a sub bass. It's just, yeah, just yeah, well. Uh, well, I, I cannot tell you how much decibels I put it because it's different every single time because uh, I don't really pay attention to that. I just use my ears. But it's a good trick to add mid-bass stuff um, because your ear connects it to the, to the root note, which is the sub-bass. And you actually, uh, a lot of beginner mistakes are to put a sub-bass really loud because you want the fattest kick. But that just doesn't work. Because even in mastering, you can't uh, master it as loud as... Uh, you can if the sub is a bit lower. So try to look it up in the higher range, yeah. I think like uh, one octave above the the real sub, maybe. Okay, thank you. Cool. Any All right, more? we have only room for one question left. Yeah. Uh, Just throw it to someone, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi, uh, so in the underground, you use your own vocal. Um, yeah. To just wondered what kind of processing you used on that to get it to that kind of sound. Um, uh, actually, uh, there's a YouTube video on that one. That's why I didn't explain it over here. You can watch Image Lines YouTube oh, account, okay. yeah. and they put a whole video with the whole explanation of the underground. I also show exactly the processing on my vocal. Oh, nice. Yeah. Sounds, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Give a big applause for medics.